uh, anti-aliasing, you're probably aware that images uh, lines get get aliased. Straight lines will end up not appearing as a, a discrete set of pixels, but as a, a possibly blurry set of um, neighbouring pixels. Um, and there are, you know, if you're rendering a line, then there, there can be techniques to produce these kinds of alias lines. Uh, and if you're going to scale images, this is the sort of thing that you might need to be aware of. Some uh, TVs and displays will actually have anti uh, upscaling and anti-aliasing algorithms built into them, which means that you, you might get an image and when you scale it up, it will actually get blurry because of these automatic upscaling algorithms which are built into your, your TV or your monitor. So image cropping can be a problem. It shouldn't be a problem if our source is PNG and we're outputting as PNG because that's lossless and it's per pixel encoding. But cropping and re-encoding images as JPEG can produce artifacts. Because JPEG stores things in 8x8 pixel blocks, if you were to crop along an 8x8 pixel block, that will produce the best result. But if we crop by some fraction of an 8x8 block, then that can actually mean that we've got to now take two neighbouring blocks that were encoded in a lossy way, and then we've got to shift across into the middle of that and then re-encode some pixels there. So we're actually, we can make the fact that we've got these blocky artefacts in the JPEG, we can make that worse, potentially, when we do this, when we do that sort of cropping. It's across the entire image, isn't it? Just, not just the edge. Well, you'd end up with each of the each of these blocks that have already been encoded as a JPEG. So that so that so that you've decoded it now into an image in memory, and then when you crop inwards, it'll be if you are going to re-encode as a JPEG, then you've got to form new eight by eight blocks, which will straddle the old blocks. So if you've lost some information in each of those blocks, you're now creating a new lossy block that's taking information from both those blocks. And that's if that's only if you're crop cropping that way. If you're cropping this way as well, you can end up taking information from four neighbouring 8x8 blocks to produce one new 8x8 JPEG block. So encoding in JPEG is, is lossy in general, but this kind of thing where you go through iterations and you, and you crop, you're actually you're degrading the image even more than if, the, say, the source was... If the source was PNG, for example, then we've got, got per pixel information, then that's, that's not as bad. Or if we're outputting as PNG, then that's not as bad because we're not introducing new degradation of the image. This is why loading a JPEG, cropping it, and then saving it again as a JPEG is a, is a bad thing, because you, you can increase the amount of um, loss of, of information. If you're only cropping on the right or the bottom, that's not so bad, because you, you will still be re-encoding the same block back. And if you use the same quality level, then you're not throwing away any more information than, you're, than you've already thrown away. YCBCR, that chroma subsampling that I talked about, it spreads colour across multiple pixels. So if you crop on the left with, to an odd no pixel number, then you will tend to re-average colours that were already averaged. So you'll actually lose more colour information if you crop on the left to an odd pixel number than if you crop on the left to a, an even pixel number. Uh, and in some of those chroma subsampling cases, you might want to crop on a multiple of four pixels because that would actually be more efficient in that in that case. Well, um, are those numbers always consistent? So JPEGs are always eight. Uh, it, I think it can be eight by eight or sixteen by sixteen. So and um, you, you still have to check the metadata of the. Of the yes. Of yes. Um, if you assume sixteen, then you can't get it wrong. <laughs> True. <It's not> <laughs> I don't think so, but who knows. There's, there's always, can always be another format. So, let's say you want to crop a JPEG image. So, basically, ideally, you need to shift from the left and try to line up with the, those eight, it's, sorry, eight by eight pixels. If, if we have the option to do that, that, that will produce less image degradation, yes. I don't know, there's a trade off if you actually, if you have to crop to that, then that's what you've got to do, you know? It's, but if there is a way that we can choose, and or if we if we can round close to you know if it's close to a value and we can push it to the eight pixel boundary, that is a way to reduce um, the quality less. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah, so that's. 
So comparing to like our operation, you just decode a JPEG and then code back to JPEG again versus actually you crop it with like outside of that eight by eight block. What you're saying is like that uh, quality will be degraded by it'll be a little bit degraded if you if you do crop off the eight by eight boundary or, or sixteen is, by sixteen. Is that would that be more more information versus actually because what, what you're saying is actually when you decode and code again, you're, you, it's already lost a bit of information, right? If you're so comparing to that, like, that lost a lot of information, is it like, not decoded followed by the 8x8 blocks? To, to actually encode an 8x8 um, block, what's happening is that these coefficients are used to um, represent how to com combine these different patterns that you can. Have, there's a low frequency patterns to high frequency patterns. And so, um, given a certain number of coefficients, at, which, which corresponds to how, um, how lossy you want the image to be, you end up combining a certain number of these patterns to approximate the, the shape that you, you're trying to represent in that, in that 8 by 8 pixel block. So, if, if you were just to load an image and, and then resave it as a JPEG image, if your encoder and your decoder are doing something sensible, you shouldn't actually lose any information because you, when you encoded it as a JPEG, you've already thrown away information. So if you just load it and save it again at the same quality, quality level, it should keep the same coefficients and you shouldn't lose information. But if you crop, then what happens is you've got not just one 8x8 eight eight pixel block, but you've also got the neighbouring blocks that you now have to re-encode some way to actually approximate what they look like. And it's there that you can lose information because you might actually need more information than is stored. You've actually got to, if you're going to save at the same quality level, you might actually end up approximating it. And so you've, you've actually got to, when you save it at that quality level, all the blocks will end up being slightly degraded because they're, they're now taking information that's come from from several different blocks. Just, it's something to be aware of, that cropping can actually produce either degraded detail or degraded colour detail. All right, so image rotation is another area where you might reduce, uh, you might lose some information. In general, only 90 degree rotations um, might be lossless. All right, so 90 degree rotations might be lossless depending on how the, the package works. I think, in theory, just um, just loading an image into memory and re then rotating the pixels and then outputting that, that, that might be lossless. But any other combination, any other rotation of the image, you've got to work out what the pixels are by sampling nearby pixels and working out what, what, what those pixels are going to be. Now, in combination with what we were just talking about with cropping, just rotating by 90 degrees, you might think is going to be lossless, but because of what we we're talking about with cropping, you could actually end up cropping into a, a boundary in a way that means that you've now got a sort of average information over different 8x8, uh, 8x8 DCT blocks, for example. And depending on the order that you do things can actually also matter. So you might be thinking, well, cropping on the right is okay because it, it doesn't change most of the image, it only changes the right edge. But if you've got some image rotation in there as well, you could actually end up degrading your image. So the order of things can matter. So in general, yeah, image rotation can be lossy and you've got to think about it and generally only do it once. Don't do it multiple times because every time you do it, it could potentially lower the resolution. If No, I'll, I mean, if it's, if it's PNG then it's, um, it's per pixel image and uh, information and you should be able to rotate by 90 degrees and you should be able to save as PNG and you shouldn't lose any information. So PNG is the best one if, you, if you're doing rotation by 90 degrees and you're also doing cropping by arbitrary pixel boundaries. But if we're saving as JPEG or if we're loading information as from JPEG, we've already um, quantized information to the, to the 8 by 8 boundaries so then you do have to be careful, and particularly if you're outputting as JPEG as well. 
and image scaling is another thing. Downscaling tends to be lossy. Obviously, we're throwing away information when we shrink the images. Upscaling can also be a problem because that we can end up seeing these JPEG artifacts and we can end up seeing aliasing, like straight, straight lines can end up become looking uh, jaggy. There are image-aware upscaling algorithms which try to fix some of these problems by making lines that um, look like straight lines, making them look like straight lines even though they've been scaled up. But those are kind of, they're distorting your image, right? They're sort of guessing on how the image um, should look. There's various algorithms like nearest neighbor, which is fast but produces jaggies. Uh, bilinear interpolation, uh, which averages four pixels. And then there's these other ones like directional cubic convolutional interpolation. That's, that's the new hotness. And AI, there's, there's all kinds of AI methods as well. But these are probably too expensive for us to actually use, but they can be very, very clever. All right, I think I've probably waffled on for too long now. Um, so I just want to say in summary, there's lots of different um, ways that image quality can be lost during operations such as cropping and scaling and encoding and decoding. Uh, so I just wanted to make you aware of some of those things. And um, thanks, thanks for listening.